I don't get no bumper video. Where's my video at? <laughs> Amen. I take that. Children of God, um, I will read today's text. It is from Mark chapter 9, verse 23 through 25. And I won't focus on the context of what's happening, but I want to focus on the response. In Mark chapter 9, verse 23, it begins with Jesus said, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the father of the, tri- of the child cried out in tears, and he said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, the scripture then says that Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit. Today, my goal through God's grace, through God's strength, and the Holy Spirit is to help our unbelief through God's word. I remember earlier in the book of Mark, Jesus said these five simple words, and these five simple words were, don't be afraid, only believe. Don't be afraid, only believe. At times, but not always, in our walk, we have this paradoxical sort of aspects going on in our life, that we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the cross of Christ, and we believe in sound doctrine. However, on the other end of it, though we believe in Christ, though we believe he is exactly who he says that he is, we may not believe that none of the practical applications in Scripture would ever work for us. And that's what a paradox is. A paradox are uh, kind of two things simultaneously existing with seemingly contradictory principles. And so today, I want us all to discuss how is it and how we believe in Christ and we trust in Christ very strongly. But why is it that we have very little faith as far as God's word being applied in our lives? If that's the case... For many of you, you may not have this problem. And praise the Lord if you don't. But for those that do, I want to be an encouragement today. Oftentimes, whether we know it or not, we interpret God's word through our beliefs and our unbeliefs. Now you say, what? No, that's not possible. Give me about 15 minutes. I got more time than that. But thank you. (laughs) We interpret scripture through our beliefs and our unbeliefs. And so at times when we get to certain points of reading the scripture and we come across some of those difficult passages... Sometimes the first thing that we say is, oh, I can't do that. Or, you know what, maybe other people can accomplish that, but I can't. But who are we to judge Scripture and then judge Scripture within the limitations of our own capabilities? Have you ever noticed that when you're reading scripture and you come across those difficult texts and you say, oh, man, I can't do that. Or maybe other people can do that, but I'll never be able to. Have you ever noticed all of the eyes in that? I can't do it. 
Maybe other people can, but that doesn't apply to me. Whatever happened to without me, you can do nothing. So our faith and our hope, when we are looking at these things, when we are looking at the text, we want to have a faith that even Christ would actually marvel at, right? And we actually see that with the centurion. The centurion responded to Christ Christ told him, he said, you know what? I will come to your home and I will heal your servant. And the centurion's response was this. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but simply speak the word only and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this servant, go. And he goes. And to another Come, and he comes toward me. And I tell another servant, do this, and he does it. And then scripture says that when he heard the centurion, that Jesus Christ marveled at the centurion's faith. He was shocked. And Christ's response was, assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. What if our faith could be like the centurion that all Christ had to do was just speak? And then we believe that was it. What if we had the sort of trust like the centurion and said, after the Holy Spirit speaks it, I'm just going to take it and run with it forever. Well, notice the centurion knew that what? According to Israel's law, my servant is unclean right now, Jesus. You just can't come into my house. So he's saying, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof but I know that there's something about you that every time you speak, every time you do something, something miraculous happens. Something miraculous happens. If this applies to you today, my first question is, why isn't our faith like that? And then an even better question How do we get faith like that? This is a faith that can make Jesus Christ himself marvel. That can make him marvel. Well, obviously, we understand that without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's Hebrews chapter 11 and 6. How many of us that when we go to God, that we are going to him as if he is actually God? You see, we should not. Contrary to popular belief, we should not go to God like he's some one of our friends. I don't believe that. My friends can't get done what I need done sometimes. My friends cannot do the miraculous. Some of my friends, maybe one, would even be willing to die for me, maybe. But even if he was willing to die for me, he's definitely not going to die for the wrongs that I've committed. So once again, Christ alone is the only one. So when we go to God, we should go to him with the expectation and the knowing that you are God. Whatever you say is going to be done. You spoke this world into into existence. There was absolutely nothing. All of the universe was completely and utterly void. 
and you did what only God can do and created everything. That is the God that we are approaching. The God that we are approaching is the same God that led Israel through the Red Sea. It is the same God of miracles. So whatever this God says, we can take it to the bank and cash it. But let us pay attention to what he said. If you can believe all things are possible, right? Well, let's start off with trying to have faith like the centurion real quick. If that's what Christ said, how many of you believe that all things are possible with God? Not just some things, but all things are possible with God. Nice. A lot of you raised your hand. Well, let's look at the scripture in that same context. Remember in Matthew chapter 9, verse 26. Now, Christ was talking in regards of salvation, but still, notice his words. The disciples asked Jesus, who can be saved? Jesus Christ's words were exactly this. With men, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. Now, watch this. In 2 Peter, this text says that God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Not only is it possible for man to be saved, but it's also possible for man to live out the saving gospel as Christ and the apostles laid out for us. So that means when we see difficult commandments that Jesus Christ has commanded of us, when we see difficult commandments that the apostles are asking of us, our response should not be, oh, I can't do that. Or maybe somebody else can do that, but that just doesn't apply to me. Maybe our response should be a biblical response that with God, all things are possible to him that believes. Let's take it a bit further. Once again, have you ever paid attention to what the blessed apostle said? And we quote this scripture a lot. It is a very famous scripture. Until hard times hit, when the Apostle Paul said that I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. Are you catching on to the all, right? Not some things, not just a couple of things, not just the things that fit my gifts, But all things, all things. So when we start to look at the words of Jesus Christ and the apostles, my humble suggestion for all of us is that when we start reading the text, that if we come across something difficult, we start to say things like, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That we start to say things that with God, all things are possible. That we remember the words of Christ when he says, fear not, only believe. How many of us in this room today that because of fear, it has hampered our spiritual growth? How many of us today that when we have tried to be more like Christ out of fear 
because we said, you know what? If I actually give my mind and my heart and my soul to God, what if I fall? What if I fail in the process of sincerely and utterly trying to be like Jesus? What are other people going to think of me? What are my parents or friends going to think of me when I, those who I've been trying to witness the gospel to, and now they see me fall? Children of God, who cares if you fall, if you are pursuing Christ? You get back up, you dust yourself off, and you keep on fighting. That is what being diligent is. That is what persevering is. Diligence and perseverance are not easy things. But my question for you is, why do we care about other people's opinion of us when we are trying to live for the most high God? Why do we care what mother-in-laws think, what father-in-laws think, what friends think, what bosses think, what co-workers think, what the world thinks, what culture thinks, when God alone should be our audience? But we allow what other people think of us to hinder us. People will say, well, you're not actually trying to be like Christ, are you? Well, you know that's impossible. Is it really? I guess those other scriptures that we went over don't apply, that I really can't do all things through Christ who will give me strength. And I guess Jesus was just having a bad moment of being God and man when he said that all things are possible to him that believes. I guess his entire humanity just took over him briefly, which is a heresy, by the way. So whose report are we going to believe? Are we going to believe our feelings in our own mind? Are we going to believe culture? Or are we truly like the centurion? going to do our best to make Jesus Christ marvel at our faith. That God, from here on out, I know I was in the place of saying, Lord, I believe, but please help my unbelief. But God, I want to be in the place now that all I have to do is just hear you speak, and I'm going to get it done. Because I am not doing it by myself. I'm doing it through Christ that gives me the strength. I am not inventing these things by myself, but these things are possible because of my belief and trust in you. So children of God, check this out. Because we have a test at the end of the sermon, and it's coming up in about two minutes. According to God, now now keep in mind, this is God's opinion, right? So your opinion don't matter. No disrespect. I know where I'm at. My opinion and your opinion don't matter, though. So God's opinion, according to God, watch this. With him, all things are possible. That's God's opinion. Whether you believe it today or not, God's opinion is this, that with him all things are possible. And then God's other opinion, God is so radical, that we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Right? And then thirdly, all things are possible to him that believes. 
So once again, God's opinion, not yours, because your opinion don't matter. My opinion does not matter. According to God, with him, all things are possible. According to God, we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. And then once again, all things are possible to him that believes. Now, we trust in the Lord with all our heart, and we do not lean to our own understanding according to the book of Proverbs. So I'm going to say this one more time. With God, all things are possible. All things are possible to him that believes, and we can do all things through Christ that gives us the strength. So, let's have faith like the centurion real quick, and let's not have faith like the other guy that says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. God is about to help our unbelief right now with us trusting in what he says concerning our belief, faith, and strength. So let's apply that with God all things are possible and that we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us and that all things are possible to him who believes. Let's apply that to these scriptures real quick. And don't none of you lie on a test, all right? Not saying you would, but I know if you were like me in grammar school, the teacher would ask a question. I didn't even hear the question, but the majority of the people raised their hands, so I did too. We won't do that today, all right? So with that context, we can do all things through Christ that strengthen us, that all things are possible to him that believes, and all things are possible with God. The first point. We do not have to have a laxed spiritual walk. We can rid ourselves of spiritual distractions. For some of you, you may feel, you know what, I'm so busy, I can't have a deeper walk with Christ. I'm so busy, I can't do this. Or I'm so confused, I can't overcome this. All things are possible to them that believe. I can do all things through Christ. Strength, we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. So if that's you, I want to encourage and exhort you today that you can overcome it. Not because you choose to in and of yourself, but because all things are possible with God. That's why you can make it. That's why your perseverance and your diligence will bear fruit. Because all things are possible with God. Point two. Maybe this is some of you. That when I'm tempted, I don't believe that God will not allow me to be tempted beyond my strength. Maybe you believe that you are always tempted beyond your strength. And maybe you believe that God does not provide a way of escape. Ah, but once again, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And with God, all things are possible. And then once again, all things are possible to him that believes. If you are suffering with temptation today, I want to encourage you You can overcome it because you can do all things through Christ who is willing to strengthen you. Maybe you believe that you can't conquer it, and you are right. You can't conquer it. But with God, all things are possible. Lust does not have a chance with God. Greed does not have a chance with God. Gluttony and whatever other sin you can think of, when the child of God trusts in his God 
and starts to say, I can conquer this because I am not alone, but because Christ is present, those sins will dissipate. Not because of your willpower, not because of your strength, but because you are united to God through Christ Jesus. And every grace and every spiritual strength and every virtue you have access to now. Will you believe that? Let's continue. I don't have to return evil for evil. I don't have to get revenge. I don't have to say mean things to people, even if they are in a different political affiliation. For some of us, getting revenge is hard, right? Well, not getting revenge is very difficult. Sometimes we feel like the person deserves our anger. Sometimes we feel like the person deserves our passive aggressiveness. Sometimes we feel that, you know what, this is just how I am. God knows my heart. God does know your heart. That's why he transforms it. That's exactly why he transforms it. So instead of saying, you know what, this is just me. This is, I just snap out on people. I'm just naturally passive aggressive. Instead, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. It's possible for me not to be this way because with God, all things are possible. And if we believe that, we may be able to even obey the commandment of loving our enemies and doing good to those that do us wrong, to giving food to our enemy if they're hungry, giving drink to our enemy if they're thirsty. Believing and trusting in what God says is the exact thing what gives us grace to keep those difficult commandments. Now, class, we're going to have to rush through the latter part of this test, okay? In the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, have you ever read the famous chapter 13, which is about love and charity, right? And when you have heard those things in this text, have you ever said, no, nope, my love never is going to be like that? But watch this. Let's read it real quick. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. And I'm going to go through it quick. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not vaunt itself up. Love is not puffed up. Love does not behave itself unseemingly. Love does not seek its own. Love is not easily provoked. Love thinks no evil. Love does not rejoice in inequity, but charity rejoices in truth. Now, you may hear that and you may say, my love is so far away from some of those things. But why? Because love thinks no evil. It's not easily provoked. Love suffers long. It's kind. It does not parade itself. Love is not envious. You may see some of those things. You may hear some of those things. And you may say, you know what? My love will never be like that. But you know what 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says? It says exactly what we've been talking about. The apostle then says, love bears all things. And then it says, it believes all things. Have we secretly just been talking about love this whole time? 
that the reason I'm asking you to have faith in God and to believe all things is because it reveals the nature of love in us. Love bears all things and love believes all things. Now, if you believe today that your love can't be like this, you're wrong. Will it take time? Absolutely. Will we have to root some things out? Absolutely. Will we adapt to certain things quicker than others? Absolutely. Is it impossible for us to do this? Absolutely not. Why? Because with God, all things are possible, church. And because we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. We no longer have to be in a place of, God, I believe, help my unbelief. We can be in a place, we can grow to a place that says, God's word says it, I believe it, that settles it, and I'm going to figure out how to do it. God said it, I believe it, that settles it, I'm going to figure out how to do it. Children of God, as I close and I'm done, I'm at the 31 mark and I'm being careful. We can believe in God, we can trust in God. And we can do everything that God has asked of us, not from our own strength, but because with God, all things are what? And we can do all things through who? That does what? Strengthens us. You see, this faith is not based on our capability. Is based upon our trust, our longing, our perseverance and diligence in God himself. Amen.